Hi everyone, I'm back and thanks for visiting. Off we go. The first thing I want to tell you is I'm on a Crescent watercolour panel, a cold press surface. And I flick and flop my colours in after only partially wetting my board and I'm using a dagger brush. I start with my light colours first and then I start infiltrating the other colours. But a lot of that white paper is still showing because it's not wet and that's why the paint won't travel there. I dried my surface first and drew in the leaves with my 2B pencil and now I'm using negative painting to start getting the leaves to come into focus. I'm using the turquoise which is a Lucas colour. I love this colour but that's the colour I'm using there and I add a little bit of sap green to it. As I'm going I'll try and remember to give you the colours that I'm using but basically they were listed at the beginning of this video and you'll have to try and work them out for yourself. But it's all negative painting to start with and I gradually build up the darks in places but I'm still leaving underneath layers showing through. This colour I'm using right now is permanent magenta mixed with French ultramarine and a little bit of turquoise. That gets me a lovely deep dark colour, lovely and rich. But for now all I'm doing is just working this painting like a big jigsaw puzzle. Bit by bit I'm starting to use my negative painting to get the leaf shapes to come into focus. You'll notice that I hop around the subject like I've got my pencil line to guide me but I often leave little areas of white and then bounce across that and start using a bit of negative painting on the other side of that white. Don't take out all your whites too soon. It's um, going to be your saving grace for your painting. You want to keep it lively and fresh. You want the colours to look clean and the white certainly helps you do that. Now if you've watched any of my videos before, I do tend to make at least one or two of the corners darker and more um, concentrated with the value. So it locks the eye and stops the viewer from leaving the painting too soon. And that's what I'm doing here. And as I move down the painting, I'm just using my round brush now and I'm pushing the colour down into the bottom one third area of the painting. All my colours are used here. That beautiful pink is Opera Rose, absolutely divine colour made by Winsor & Newton, I think. And I use it a lot in this painting and that's what gives me that lovely pink glow. It looks great against the turquoise, doesn't it? So still using my little round brush, which is a silver black velvet number eight. I'm dragging some of the colors down. I'm using slightly more intense um, values. And this is a mixture of French ultramarine and opera rose on the side. Now I'm back to permanent magenta, French ultramarine, even a little bit of turquoise still going for the negative painting. I now have at least two leaves, maybe three. A little bit of thirsty brushwork just to help get that turquoise colour back where it had uh, been covered over. And now I'm using the sap green mixture with, and it's over the top of the orange, but um, I've used a little bit of the lemon yellow here just to introduce the colour into that orange area and make them settle happily together and a little bit of turquoise as well went in there and gradually just working down my painting i've painted a little bit of the lemon yellow onto some of the white areas within the leaf shape and now i'm back to using the turquoise
just popping in a little bit of colour. If it got a bit too dark and I was covering up underneath layers a little bit too much, I use a little bit of very light blotting with my paper towel. Now I'm really just intuitively painting this. I don't have a reference photograph, I'm just playing with the shapes and colours. That's lemon yellow, neat lemon yellow, and I'm just glazing it into areas and then adding cadmium orange with it. Beautiful mixtures. And then also, you can also add, and you'll see me do that on this leaf, that's quinacrid and coral into the yellow and it is a beautiful co color uh, combination. Now Cornacrid and Coral is a Daniel Smith color and I've become a real fan of it. I'm using Cadmium Orange here and I extended this leaf to overlap the other leaf which it wasn't in my drawing. That's Quinacrid and Coral that I've added to the Cad Orange. So now you know it goes into Cad Orange really nicely too. I'm reinforcing some of the darks and those are the mixtures of my Turquoise, Permanent Magenta, French Ultramarine Blue. But always through your paintings, when you're doing a watercolor, you do need to still show your underneath layers peeping through. I put the mat around the edge because I was just having a look at the way it was sitting on the page with that leaf that's sticking out on the left hand side. I think I'm going to have to work a little bit on that. This is the smaller leaves I'm painting in a more positive way. You notice I've switched to painting the actual object rather than behind the object. That's called positive painting. Now just adding a little bit of sap green and I added a little bit of French ultramarine to the sap green so it became a little darker and that goes into the leaves as well. Now I'm back to using a mixture of my green and a bit of turquoise and I'm just weaving it through even with a little bit of the lemon yellow and weaving it through in and out of some of the speckles that I made in the first throw in of paint and always using my paper towel occasionally to just blot out if I've gotten a bit overzealous. Now it's time to assess where these negative areas are and how interesting they are. I really want to make a feeling of depth. It's a very short depth of field because we've abstracted this image. So I'm trying to give areas of intrigue by lifting out and doing some more negative painting. So that's what I was doing a minute ago and now I'm reinforcing these leaves at the top area of the painting and gradually just picking up a bit of momentum and getting this painting to a fairly finished state. Now, as some of you might have seen in an, a previous video, I use little pieces of paper, coloured pieces of paper. My choices for this are turquoise canson paper, and I'm just tearing off little pieces and popping it in areas where I think maybe this painting could do with a little bit of help. And I will have to use a little bit of permanent white gouache, which is a Winsor & Newton uh, product, and I'm mixing that with the turquoise paint and um, a little rigger brush. I'm just touching up where areas I think look a bit dead. Where my pieces of paper were, I lift them up and then I pop in the paint in those areas. It just gives a little bit more sparkle. It's still considered a watercolour because gouache is opaque watercolour and it helps to give me a bit more depth. I think the turquoise against those lovely quinacrid and coral orange mixes looks divine. I, I really enjoy seeing that contrast, the warm against cool. Very, very nice and not an easy 
colour mix to work with if you're doing a lot of wet into wet watercolour because the two things will grey each other out. But I'm working wet into dry so I've got a lot more control over this. That's the key to this and I'm also able to keep a lot of the white paper showing through because I'm not using very sloppy paint. I've got a lot more control. When I do that negative painting you'll notice I constantly leave the underneath layers peeping through whether it it implies that there's some sort of branch or vine or something in the background that's fine but those little bits of turquoise really help pick this whole painting up. I think you'll see that at the end of this video. And rather than painting out whole areas within those leaves, you see I'm just using the Morse code technique of a dot dot dash dash here and there. That's rather fun. It gives the whole thing a more playful appearance and it gives the whole painting energy. I think you'll agree. It, it's just a sparkle that goes throughout the whole painting by just putting a little dot here and there. And now I'm back to using my little rigger and I'm putting in some linear information which is really the icing on the cake for this painting and in the form of veins on the leaves. Now it's very difficult with this particular way of painting that you don't get you've got to try not to be too contrived with it that's why I'm blotting some of those lines that I've just put down or sometimes I'll even go back over them with water and dilute them a little bit as in there I'm just softening it back if you put too much in sometimes it looks too contrived um, this is way more than I would normally do but for the sake of the video I'm giving you a lesson on how I paint the veins as well but you don't have to sometimes just the foreground leaves would be all you need to do anyway see what you think now I decided the uh, green paint coming across both leaves looked a little bit strange so I've decided to take it out and use with uh, negative painting with my little rigger brush. I don't want to take out that turquoise because that's very important but I do need to give some sort of a thread of dark in behind the leaves to push them forward. So occasionally I will reinforce that as I'm going. As I said it's an intuitive way to paint you seem to realize as you're going that things are not looking quite as good as what you expected so putting a mat around it like this and closing in on certain areas helps certainly does for me and I'm really punching up the darks here now because that area on the left looked very flat and dead to me even with my turquoise touches so I'm reinforcing it with contrast the lightness and darkness of a color so in, in other words if you have a flat area usually you can fix it with a value change right next to it and that's what I'm doing now it's a mixture of turquoise and permanent magenta that's what I'm using for the dark and I'm also implying another depth another area of some sort of linear vines or um, branches in behind some areas but these are the final touches for my painting I leave that mat around it too it kind of helps me assess things a bit easier I might not crop the painting in the end but it's helping me to close in on the danger areas the areas that I wasn't happy with and here's my finished painting I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll subscribe and leave a comment and come visit me again often. I so enjoy doing these for you and I hope you enjoyed this one too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.